Inside Edition's Megan Alexander is often asked for the secret to her success. She always replies, it's her husband, Brian. How nice. The man who she says was well worth the wait. Take a look. In a world where sex sells, Inside Edition correspondent Megan Alexander chose abstinence. She says saving herself wasn't just about marriage, but it gave her self-confidence, which helped establish her career and finally find the man she had been waiting for. Megan shares the importance of self-worth, encourages singles to prepare for the ultimate teammate, and keep him for a lasting love. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Megan Alexander. Megan, it's great to have you here. It is great to be here, Terry. Thank so, you. We want to know about Brian. Yeah. Why is he the secret to your success? I know. I got a little emotional as I saw that. <laughs> um, you know, he's my best friend. He's my number one fan. He's my biggest cheerleader. And uh, in life, I was looking for someone mm -hmm. like that. I was looking for just that lifelong mate. Yes. Um, it's not easy to find that person, but when you find him, Grab on and don't let go. <laughs> don't let go. <laughs> and you were very strong um, within your relationship with Brian and telling him that you wanted to remain a virgin until you were married. You are still a proponent of abstinence today. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about your feelings about the value of that and the why behind it. Sure. Well, obviously, my faith is very important to me. Faith is a huge part of it. I believe it's God's mm -hmm. best uh, choice for us. But Terry, I also am really believing that it's a self-esteem issue too. Yeah. I had a father that told me I'm worth it. Yeah. I have talent. I have a soul. I have a brain. He encouraged me to go after my career. Um, I tell people I was too busy chasing my career to get in trouble with boys <laughs> when I was in my <laughs> teens and 20s. So I had goals. Yeah. I set those goals. I got involved in wonderful activities. And then when it was time to date, I felt like I was, you know, feeling good about my career and able to really focus on what marriage is. I had a good group of friends. And when Brian came along, we were already good friends. I joke that we didn't have the first awkward first date yeah. <laughs> because he already knew what I was about. Um, and he knew that my faith was important to me. He became a Christian later in life, found his faith later, but he already knew that I wanted to wait until I was married. Were you attracted to him right away? You know, I, I called him a brother and a good friend, which we all joke about now, because until he really claimed his faith on his mm -hmm. own, I wasn't interested. And, yeah. and we talk about that all the time now. And I tell girls, you need to find somebody that you're yeah. equally yoked with. Yeah. That no is missionary so dating. Exactly. <laughs> and he waited five years. So he, he wanted to be with me for the right reasons. Uh -huh. um, but I needed to find him and see him claim that faith on his own. And then I was interested. You know, it sounded like your, your dad did so many of the right things, said so many of the right things, was the right person in your life, you were raised in a Christian home. That's not true for a lot of young women. What advice would you give to them? Where do they find that, that anchor that you have in your heart? Absolutely. Family comes in a lot of different forms. Mm -hmm. It can be a teacher. It can be a good friend. You know, I had role models in my life that weren't necessarily famous people mm -hmm. that I admired for their relationships, the way they dated, their married life. So I really think finding role models and people yeah. that you admire is so valuable. And honestly, Terry, I never even thought that I would be this open about my personal life. But when the opportunity came to share my story, my husband and I said, you know, those role models were so important to us mm. when we were dating and somebody to look to and say, hey, it's worth it. Look at them now yeah. in their journey of marriage. So we knew we needed to speak out if it was going to encourage the next generation. I don't think the young people have uh, enough people talking about this as an option, yeah. that oh, it is okay I, to wait. And in fact, quite the antithesis. I mean, everything around us in our culture, down to the TV commercials that we watch, are saturated in enticement to be sexually active. And, yes. and for young kids, yes. really young kids, I mean, how do you survive, you know, in, in the work that you do? you're you're enveloped in all of that how do you keep strong in what your your values are and your moral code sure you need to decide what you're living for mm -hmm. what you believe in what matters in life and again I tried to establish that and set that with my high school friends my college friends my family my church um, Brian and I in our dating relationship attended a Bible study together we read a book together mm -hmm. now as a married couple we continue to attend a Bible study and have that checkup with our pastor mm -hmm. if you will I tell people just like you go to the doctor for a checkup your marriage needs a checkup and a yeah. tune-up every now and then so I think it, that keeps me grounded in culture because my friends believe in the same things that I do 
but it certainly still makes me frustrated. There are days in, in my life and in, in my work where I go, gosh, I wish we had just a little bit more variety in television and movies mm -hmm. where it isn't always just jump into bed. There's one character that says it's okay to wait mm -hmm. because I think that's re representative of America. Yeah. There are people just like me that are waiting and want to wait and did wait, and well, it's okay. And I think people, the, the message that young people get is that you sort of need to practice everything before you get there. Yes. There, there is certainly a price to be paid for that. And yeah. at the same time, you didn't do that. I mean, what was that like for you? Yeah. Well, you know, the, the Christian world can understand this. Um, when you've learned to just say no, and then finally you get married, it's a little intimidating yeah. that, oh my gosh, here we go. Uh, but my husband said the cutest thing to me on our wedding night. He said, Meg, we have the rest of our lives to work on it. Yeah. Isn't that part of the journey of marriage is that you don't have to have everything figured out. I think that's God's secret and God's blessing for us is that I have the security that I'm with one man that I can figure out this journey mm -hmm. with for the rest of my life. We get to share that. It's personal. It's private. It's special between us. And I think that's one thing that, that keeps the glue solid yeah. through those tough times is we, we share that together. What would you say to young women today who are trying to figure out who they are and what life is all about? I would tell them to sit up straight, be proud of who they are, uh, be proud to be different in this world. I realize I'm different, I'm unusual. That's okay. God created you to be special and different. Uh, go after your dreams in life. Uh, take care of yourself. Think about your goals, your career, your friends, what you want to offer the world. And get in environments and situations, Terry, where you're going to meet like-minded guys. That's where yes. you rub elbows with those guys that will believe in the same things that you do. And as your dad said to you, value yourself. Yes. Hold yourself in high esteem. Well, yeah. you can read more about Megan in the spring issue of a great magazine. It's called Woe Woman, W-H-O-A, Woe Woman Magazine. If you'd like more information on that, you can go to CBN.com. And, of course, you can tune in to see Megan on Inside Edition. To find out when Inside Edition airs in your area, all you have to do is go to CBN.com as well. Great to have you with us. Thanks, Thank Terry. you so much Thank for the you. message you bring.